What's up, everybody? Public back here with another video. This is going to be the last one for a little bit. I'm about to go on my, my honeymoon, so I want to make some just a couple quick videos just to give you my thoughts on some of the recent changes. So yesterday, or hopefully before this video is posted, um, I uploaded kind of like a stream highlight of my a reaction to the somewhat controversial blue post. I also did a video, or I talked with Max about that as well. So that's all covered in, in those videos. If you haven't seen those yet, suggest you check those out. Gave kind of my rough thoughts on the reaction to that recent blue post. But there's a lot of stuff happening. In today's video, I want to break down the kind of recent changes to the tree. Especially since my last video, there have been quite a few updates. Uh, both to the tree in general, as well as just kind of philosophy stuff that you can tell they're shifting direction. So in this video, we're going to kind of go over... What's changed so far in the tree, the new layout, and go over kind of the full change log of the state of Shadow Priest as we see it today. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so first part of this video, let's just go over the tree and kind of give rough reactions to a lot of the things that have changed. Uh, we'll start off with the class tree. It has the kind of least amount of changes, but they're still important. Um, I will say the class tree is overall looking better and better with each iteration. I wouldn't call it perfect by any means, but, you know, solid B tier as like a Shadow Priest player, maybe even a, an A tier. Uh, definitely some things left to be desired um, that we covered uh, in, in the blue post reaction the other day. But overall, what has changed? Uh, not a whole lot in this kind of top section. They did move Phantasm up here. They actually split it off. So activating Fade removes all snare effects. Somewhat... Um, it's actually somewhat nice in the sense of if you decide that you don't want to take Dispersion, uh, which makes you immune to those movement impairing effects, you can clear it with uh, Fade instead if you pick this up. Um, other than that, uh, a lot of this is uh, pretty much the same. The other thing that changed was they made Mind Control and then Dominate Mind instead of Dominant Mind um, a Choice node, which is kind of what it was anyways. They actually just gave you a point back. Uh, is is, is kind of how that works out. So if you want to dominate mine, you can just pick the one pointer. You don't need to invest in mine control before you pick that up. So that's definitely a good change. A couple other like small tweaks, uh, like they made spell warding a choice now with blessed recovery on the left hand side, not super relevant uh, for shadow. Uh, so that's kind of that in here. As far as like a build path goes, you know, you you, have, you still have a, quite a lot of freedom here. I think a lot of us will go shadow or death, death and madness. Um, maybe you pick up Dominant Mind just to make pathing a little bit nicer. And this might actually have uses um, in, in raid or dungeon environments. Uh, for sure, we'll grab Body and Soul, probably Angelic Feather as well. Um, and, and now you're kind of left to, well, what else do you want? Now, there is Shadow Mend here and the two nodes that are buffing Shadow Mend. Although, in the blue post that we talked about yesterday, they didn't hint that they're th considering removing Shadow Men, so that's likely we'll get something different here. Maybe flash heal buffing stuff, um, but not sure. Uh, for now, we'll go ahead and make, you know, pick up Masochism. Although, I will say, I do like having Depth of Shadows while leveling. It's actually been pretty pretty nice. Uh, you know, guess we'll pick up Phantasm. Uh, no change to Sheer Terror or Void Tendrils. I assume a lot of us are going to just grab the Dispels at some point just to have them. Uh, and here we get to our middle section. The new thing here, they moved Tithe Evasion from the Spec Tree into the Class Tree, which is great. Uh, so, you know, getting that reduced Shadow or Death damage is very easy and somewhat free at this point, uh, which is nice. You know, Shadow Flame Prism is still in the game. We have a couple other talents in here like... Death Speaker and Pain of Death that are also buffing Shadow or Death um, as a couple other things as well. So having that reduced damage taken from Death is is super nice. Love to see this in here. Used to be a Choice node with Hallucinations in the spec tree. That has now become Baseline. So Hallucinations is that you get 6 Insanity or whatever when you cast like Dispel, Leap of Faith, that kind of thing. So that is Baseline and they put Tithe Evasion uh, right here. Very easy to get, which is awesome. Um... Only other thing that changed in this kind of middle section, obviously we'll pick up PI, come down here, Twins is still here, Twisted Fate is still here. They moved Throws of Pain down here, and then made it a two-point node to kind of make up for uh, other point pathing. So um, a little bit less efficient in that sense, but it kind of balanced out with the, the dominant mind change. Uh, so we definitely want to pick this up, so you have to get one of these three. I suspect a lot of us will pick San Lan as the default. Um, and this is kind of your kind of standard build. And you can see we still have three points that we need to spend to get down to that section, the bottom section here. Uh, and this is where you can pick up your purified disease. Maybe you grab mass to spell depending on what you need. Uh, you can also pick up, you know, improve mass to spell. Any of these other things kind of dependent on what that situation is. I'll grab Leap of Faith for now. 
and then we go into the bottom section. Largely unchanged, the, the stuff I'll call out, uh, translucent image is now back at a 10% DR, uh, which is what it was in the first iteration of alpha, which is pretty nice. So as it stands right now, pending the removal of Shadowman, if that does happen, we have two 10% DRs available to us in the class tree, one via fade, and then another one via shadow mend, uh, which is you know nice to have, uh, so you can get that DR up quite a lot, actually, especially if you want to talent into the reduced cooldown of fade to make fade a 20 second cooldown, um, meaning you can have uh, that 10% DR up for 50% of the fight if you want to just keep spamming fade on cooldown, but um, yeah. And then the mind game stuff is largely the same. They did remove the insanity from mind games. Um, I think they made it reverse more damage or something like that. Uh, kind of sad they removed the insanity. I think I, I more or less get it. Hopefully it hits like a truck when tuning comes out. I think that's kind of all it's good for right now. But there's that. Uh, Halo Divine Star is still here, still with their problems. Uh, hopefully we get some um, updates on this. Uh, I think for most content you'll take Divine Star unless Halo doesn't just randomly pull stuff and then you can take that. Uh, and yeah, and again, you're still kind of free to pick what you need here. If you want a bit of extra survivability, you can take the Desperate Prayer Healing and then maybe Angelic Bulwark. Um, generally, these are both pretty weak options. I think a lot of people will, will grab the Fade cooldown, maybe get Void Shift. Uh, you could take Crystalline Reflection just for that little bit of heal on your um, Power Word Shield. I mean, again, you have a lot of options. Pick up Void Shield, improve Mass to Spell. Um, renew, Prayer of Mending might be something if you want a bit more off healing. So you still have quite a lot of choice in the class tree. Uh, you know, you can get all the things that you really want as a Shadow Priest and then really customize your build for that situation. So overall, pretty happy with this. And that is the, the class tree. All right, now I said that was the class tree, but there are some things I didn't mention uh, because I forgot about them. So this is the blue post kind of going over all of the changes that happened. Uh, I covered a lot of these already. The one I will call out, Improved Mind Blast, as you might have realized, is gone from the tree. They just gave us that Mind Blast cooldown baseline. Definitely a nice little buff for Holy and Disc, especially. Uh, they can use Mind Blast more often now. Uh, for Shadow Priest, it's just, you know, we don't have to pick that as a point anymore. Uh, they did buff Holy Nova. I, I hope I hope this doesn't become <laughs> part of our rotation, but there's that. You can see this is the Mind Blast cooldown becoming baseline, uh, and they fixed a couple bugs as well. Uh, so that's kind of the, the wrap of the class tree. A lot of small updates, but overall positive changes. Um, I think they can keep going and keep iterating, but, you know, still looking pretty solid. Okay, so let's cover the changes to the shadow tree. So, uh, as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff here. Uh, the tree in general just looks a little different. You can see they've moved quite a lot of things around. Um, so to start things off, the pathing is already updated. So you, you will get Devouring Plague as your kind of first thing that you'll pick. Um, and immediately you're, you're left with, you can you pick Silence, Dispersion, or Shadowy Apparitions. Obviously you'll pick Shadowy Apparitions. It's the only thing that's damaging at this point. And you kind of want to think about this as just start clicking stuff that's damage oriented until you can't, uh, is the way at least I'm approaching it. So you can pick up AS or Tormented Spirits, depending on what you want. And then you can come down here. Um, this is somewhat familiar. So we have our, our choice node now. So for our cooldown, they put kind of Void Eruption back where it used to used to be. Uh, so you get to pick Void Eruption or Dark Ascension. Uh, they did kind of rework Dark Ascension a little bit. It now is a 20 second buff. And I think it it uh, scales a little bit more as well. I'm, I think a lot of this is the cooldowns are still lacking identity and kind of what this means for like a play style of like, why do you pick Void Eruption or why would you pick Dark Ascension? Hopefully we see some iteration on that. Um, right now it feels like Void Eruption is just kind of the better thing. I mean, Dark Ascension doesn't have a whole lot of play style changes with it, but obviously they're still hopefully work in progress. Uh, we'll pick up Shadowy Insight, which is changed from Vampiric Insight. Those of you that have been playing Shadow for a hot minute will remember this as a talent. Uh, so they 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 changed it to where now Shadow Word Pain dot damage has the chance to reset your Mind Blast, meaning you you still want to spread your Vampiric touches for Auspicious Spirits and things like that and Psychic Link, but spreading Shadow Word Pains gives you more Mind Blast uh, resets with Shadowy Insight. Um, I think part of the reason for this, I'm assuming, is to try to make Dark Void make a bit more sense. Although, I'm not sure how that'll work out. Uh, definitely still want to pick that up, though. And then you kind of have, you have some options. So, Mind Spike is here. And interestingly enough, they've stripped it down to be very simply, it's a casted spell that does damage and generates insanity. That's all it does. It doesn't remove dots anymore and does not 
give a stacking crit increase uh, to Mind Blast baseline. Um, so as it stands right now, it's really unclear when Blizzard would want us to use Mind Spike over Mind Flay as a filler, since it, it has no cooldown, and there's no consequence to using it like it was before. Again, I still think this needs some iteration, because it's just not clear. Um, and we do need to spend some more points before we get down into this, this uh, middle section here. You have a few options here. Like I said, there's the utility options. You're basically now forced to pick either Silence or Dispersion. So at, at this point, it's not costing you damage because of this, uh, because the pathways aren't opening up. So what that means is you can get Dispersion or Silence without losing damage, is how that looks out. The problem is you can't get both. Um, so I think a lot is going to depend on what you want. Like if you're Mythic Plus, maybe you pick Silence. Uh, if you're in Raiding, you'll probably pick Dispersion. And then this flows bound into the Misery Dark Void choice. Uh, for a lot of us, Misery will make the most sense until Dark Void gets tweaks. Uh, and then, you know, the tree has now opened up in, in that respect. And again, you can kind of, you can skip Mind Spike if you want and pick up other things if you before you move on. I think Mind Spirit still here, still our Insanity Spender. This still needs a lot of work. It doesn't feel the greatest. Uh, you can tell they're still trying to make it feel good and make sense. It now consumes uh, Insanity as soon as you cast it. So it requires 25 insanity, we'll consume that immediately, and then on all, every tick after we'll also consume 25. Uh, so you're effectively able to dump your insanity bar much quicker than you were before. A full tick quicker, if that makes sense. Um, so if we're just thinking about single target, probably going to pick up the new uh, thing that I didn't talk about since my last video. Uh, they, these were not yet implemented in the first version. So we have Coalescing Shadows. Mind Seer and Shadowward Pain Damage has a chance to grant you a buff. Um, and Mindflay also has a chance to give you that buff just at a different chance. And that stacks three times. So when you get that buff, casting Mind Blast or Mind Spike will consume those buffs to deal increased damage based on how many stacks it is. And then after consuming that buff, increases the damage of your dots for a short time after. This is a really... There's a lot in, involved with a buff like this, with a talent like this. Uh, I'm not sure it has a whole lot of gameplay implications other than giving you kind of a reason to press spells in a certain order. Um, and that's really kind of what this is here for. Uh, but, you know, we'll kind of see what that what that means. So I think it's just kind of another baseline proc in the game. I'm not sure if I like this yet. I haven't played with it enough, but that's what that's doing. Um, I'll kind of continue down here. Can go into further into this with Puppet Master, which gives Shadow Fiend and Mindbender also a chance to give you this buff. So that means if you pick this talent, you get Mind Seer, Shadow Word Pain, and Mind Flay, and Shadow Fiend and Mindbender uh, has a chance to give you that that buff. And then also the second part is Shadowy Apparition. So basically, it's just applying a bunch of modifiers to a bunch of things to just passively give you these buffs. Um, and again, that's kind of how that works. And then the last one is Harness Shadows, which increases the chance for you to get this um, when dealing damage with Mind Seer and Shadow Word Pain and Mind Flay. And then uh, you have a 100% chance to gain a Coalescing Shadow when critically hit by an attack. Obviously, this isn't super relevant for PvE. Uh, this is just kind of flat buffing those procs, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, a lot of this, I don't know how much re reaction you're going to do to these procs. So that's why I'm not sure I'm a big fan of them, to be honest. Um, but, you know, we'll kind of see how they play out. Um, moving on with the rest of the tree. So now we've picked Void Eruption. You get some options. You want to pick up Shadow Crash to give you that thing where Shadow Crash is still spreading Vampiric Touch. And with Misery, that means Shadow Pain as well. That combination still feels amazing. You press a Shadow Crash and four targets get VT and Shadow Pain. Feels great. Um, definitely feels better than picking Dark Void. Um, although, obviously, if you have Dark Void and Shadow Crash... You can, you know, Dark Void every 30 seconds, Shadow Word Pain, eight, eight people, and then Shadow Crash to VT, four of them, and then you could finish the VTs if you want. Uh, the problem is, these, you know, these cooldowns aren't synced. Shadow Crash is hasted, so it's not going to come back when you want it. So still think Misery is going to be the go-to um, until they, you know, either buff Dark Void or honestly they could just remove it if they wanted to. Uh, so there's Shadow Crash. Um, it's not competing with Void Torrent anymore, which is important. And then you, again, some more options here. Do you want to pick up Ancient Madness? This is now a nerfed version of that spell, but now it does also work with Dark Ascension. So you can get that crit, decreasing crit 
after popping either of the two minute cooldowns that you select by by picking ancient madness uh mind mental decay is here which is uh that's where your mind flayer minds here refreshes your shadow of pain vt uh, definitely something i think you'd want just especially with you know we're not pressing void bolt as much as, as we used to so getting you know not having to refresh dots as often is nice and here we have surge of darkness so surge of darkness is still around with mind spike um and it's more or less the same it just doesn't have the and now it doesn't remove dots kind of thing so the proc is purely just to make mind spike instant and deal more damage otherwise it's the same and then mind melt which um got added effects so now it says mind spike reduces the cast time of your next mind blast by 50 percent and increases its critical strike chance by 50 percent stacking to two times uh right now the spell data seems a little wonky I i'm guessing here when this is stacked uh to two that means your next mind blast is a guaranteed crit although that's not quite how the spell data is reading so we'll see how that actually ends up working um so they've kind of baked in that initial thing that we had before it's just you have to get a few extra points to pick that up okay so rest of our tree what else do we have in here so whispers of the damned was altered slightly to now also work with mind spike so mind blast and mind spike chris generate more insanity nice uh, you can pick up psychic link here Maddening Touch, which is amazing insanity generation in AoE. Uh, this is kind of where some of the problems start to come in again. Of you know, if you want to kind of go into this bottom left section, you know, especially you know, obviously if you want Mindbender, Idol of Yasharge, or the Shadowfin Prism stuff, you will have to take Maddening Touch, which is kind of leaning towards okay, this is kind of our AoE section of the tree. So if you want to go AoE, you would obviously you definitely want Maddening Touch. It's so much insanity inside of Mythic Plus. Um, and then more, I think they're kind of aiming the more single target stuff in the bottom right. So now the problem is they put dark evangelism in, in here. So it's still a thing, although now it's not required. So if we go and change this to dark ascension instead, dark ascension no longer requires or consumes those dark evangelism stacks, which I think is overall positive change in terms of usability, although it does remove a bit of the identity of the cooldown, but it's still here and saying, Mind Flay, Mind Seer, and Void Torrent gives you a stacking buff, increasing the damage of your uh, periodic shadow effects. So we kind of still want this. The tricky part is to get this, even in single target, you have to pick Psychic Link, which does zero damage on single target. Um, or you pick Unfurling Darkness, which does do damage on single target, but does require you have to you know, press Vampire Touch every double cast it every 15 seconds. So kind of a weird option, because uh, you're kind of gated on two things that are kind of not really single target um i kind of understand why they put things where they did but this pathing is kind of awkward um although the nice thing if you're picking shadow crash and if you're picking misery shadow crash will also consume and proc unfurling darkness so now obviously shadow crash is cool down until you get a bunch of haste is not synced up with unfurling darkness but at least that interaction kind of makes it ignorable if you want although kind of strange um we'll come over here pick up dark evangelism and then you unlock the bottom section of the tree which doesn't have a whole lot of changes they removed a couple things in here um but from the last time we spoke they, they did make a couple changes so we'll start on the right hand side with the most stuff so they had a, a choice node with void torrent and damnation so these two are down here and they're both one minute cooldowns baseline uh, now, you can then talent into Malediction, which also affects Void Torrent now, to reduce those down to 30-second cooldowns. So you can get a 30-second Void Torrent or a 30-second Damnation. Um, not the most exciting things in the world, so I'm a little unsure how I feel about them being so far down here, because they're effectively competing with everything else in this section, uh, which we have things like Mind Devourer, which is kind of a capstone version, I guess. Uh, saying Mind Blast was a 15% chance to make your Devouring Plague or Mind Seer cost no insanity. Um, which is kind of interesting, especially considering the Mind Seer part could potentially be very, very strong. Um, but it is somewhat on the opposite end of like the AoE-ish parts of our tree. Um, so you kind of have to pick and choose what AoE stuff that you'd like. Um, now, of course, you could not take Void Torrent and you could come down uh, this side and get it that way. Uh, and then you would also pick up Mastermind, which increases the crit strike chance of Mind Spike and Mind Blast by 6% and their crit strike damage bonus by 30%. Kind of plays into Whispers of the Damned a little bit as well. I think these would make more sense if they were kind of chained off of each other since they are so related, but 
um yeah just some pathing awkwardness i think a lot of this could stand to have some kind of like a straight line from ancient madness to dark evangelism maybe from whispers to mastermind a couple extra pathing nodes i think would help quite a lot here um we still have insidious ire which is our taladar's legendary and we just have idol of yog saron there's no longer that lunacy choice next to it uh no changes to the idols in this build so all the bugs and problems with them are still around uh we do have access to death speaker still which is the old Zex exterminate Nanus something something legendary from legion um which is shadow or pain damage has a chance to reset shadow death cooldown and give you that um extra damage as if it was below 20 percent or mind flay insanity uh, which i'm still not a big fan of uh it says casting devouring plague transforms your mind flay into a buff for five seconds uh now picking either of these you get to go down here and pick pain of death which is Basically, Psychic Link working with Shadow Word Death. Um, now, interesting, this does work off of Shadow Word Pain. So again, we do have kind of a split of like um, reasons for wanting to spread Shadow Word Pain versus Vampiric Touch, depending on what talents you've picked. Still have Idol of Nazoth and Cthulhu down here. Uh, Monomania is still here, which is just while channeling Flayer Seer, the tick rate of your dots is increased by 25%. Um, interestingly enough, this is like a pretty nerfed thing for Mindseer. It kind of reads as if it would be good for Mindseer. It's only currently affecting your main target um, of the, the channel, not all targets that Mindseer is ticking on. Um, and with the change of Mindseer now giving uh, Consuming Insanity on that initial cast, this is not being up as often. So in general, not a fan of Monomania. I would prefer them just honestly get rid of it. Um, and if they did, they could probably clean up the tree to make it a bit more symmetrical, although that's a small point, obviously. Um, and then to kind of cap it off, you know, we still have, if you want to come down here for like an AOE build, you pick Mindbender or I Idol of Yasharge. Um, I still hate this as a change, <laughs> as a, as a thing. I don't think Idol of Yasharge is exciting enough, especially compared to picking Mindbender. If you went Idol of Yasharge and came down here, you know, it really wouldn't make sense to get Shadowflame Prism with Idol of Yasharge. You're just missing out so much damage with Mindbender here. Um, so kind of a weird... You know, like if you pick Idol, like going down here, uh, you know, you would never. I think like picking Shadowflame Prism just doesn't make sense because I, like Shadowflame Prism does less damage with Shadowfiend than it does with Mindbender. It's just it doesn't make any sense. I think I feel like it's a bug or a mistake. You can actually read it in the tooltip where it says Mindbender deals. You see the the ratio, their coefficient is 0.442 times spell power, but for Shadowfiend it's 0.408. So it just makes no sense at all. Hopefully they fixed it, but it's been that way all throughout Shadowlands. Um, I don't know. This whole section is just kind of messy. I'm not a big fan of Idol of Yusharge. And honestly, not a big fan of Shadowfiend either. I think Mindbender just being baseline, replacing Shadowfiend would be way better. <laughs> and then they can just leave Idol of Yusharge here if they want as and remove the choice note effectively. So, yeah, I think we're we're getting there they've solved some problems they've introduced some new ones it's kind of the tldr so let's kind of go over you know problems or notes and kind of what's the state of shadow priest right now as it stands on the dragonflight beta okay a couple things just to clarify from the the post that i didn't mention in the overview that we just did uh covered a lot of this some things i didn't cover so silence they did make it a 40 yard silence again this was uh, a rank two spell that they I think accidentally removed in Dragonflight, now baseline, which is an amazing change. Uh, a couple other things here. Uh, Voidform is now a 20 second cooldown up from 15 seconds, and they did uh, re slightly revert the uh, the nerf to Void Bolt, Void Bolt's cooldown. So you do cast more Void Bolts than you did before. This is a, again, positive change, although uh, if you notice, they also removed Hungering Void and Surrender to Madness. Obviously, these spells, you know, weren't perfect, but they did give a bit more of a gameplay loop for Void Form. So I think removing these, especially Hungering Void, has lost some definition of Void Form that I really hope they add back into the tree or into the cooldown in some way or form. So we'll see, you know, fingers crossed they do something. Um, I did mention that the kind of nerf to Ancient Madness... Um, you know, it, 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 not, it's a rework. You, you know, it is lasting for the full duration of both buffs to compensate for Void Form lasting 20 seconds, um, as well as Dark Ascension lasting 20 seconds up from 18. So you do get that crit for a bit longer than before, but it is less crit. Um, 
I, I've never been a huge fan of Ancient Madness. Obviously, getting like a big burst of crit can be helpful for like burst AOE, but never been my favorite thing in the world. But you know, we'll see. Um, they also remove Piercing Shadows and Lunacy. Big fan of the Piercing Shadows removal. This is basically just a maintenance buff, so glad to see that they, they reworked that. And like I said, Lunacy was removed as well. Um, I think something like Lunacy could be baked into, you know, Dark Ascension if they want to, but yeah, overall probably healthy just to free up, you know, to give not as many, uh, you know, we still have quite a lot of nodes in here and they did do some trimming. I think we're almost there, but you know, uh, not quite. You know, if you want to finish out like a build where you're, you know, going, you know, full AOE, for example, I think it's still a little kind of like you know, finishing it doesn't feel super satisfying yet, which I think is the the main problem. Now you can get the Shadow Flame Prism stuff, maybe get Death Speaker, come down, grab Idol of Nazoth. You know, there is some. You feel like you're able to get more than you were before. Um, although I think there's still like one or two things that could be tweaked in here. Uh, so let's kind of go over my feedback for this in general and cover things I didn't have time in the overview. Okay, so I'm basically going to be, this is a video version of the feedback I've already posted on the forums. And I'll try to put a link in the description below. I do think it's fun. I, I love to see what this is going to be when you watch this video. Since they did the blue post uh, shortly after I posted this, there have just been a huge flux of people coming to the forums and giving feedback on Priest, which is a good thing. I'm glad people are giving feedback. Uh, let's hope that the developers are listening. So first thing to talk about is Mind Spike. So they removed the damage over time effects and moved the kind of crit stuff over to Mind Melt, mind melt talent, which I think is fine. Uh, now the problem is it feels like it's just very unclear when you want to press Mind Spike versus pressing Mind Flay. Now there's no longer a definition there. And it kind of feels like it's a it's a conflicting thing. Um, obviously, the, the main difference is Mind Flay is a periodic spell, and Mind Spike is a instant damage thing. Or not instant, but a casted damage event. So that does come into play with stuff like you know Dark Ascension, Dark Evangelism that are like specifically buffing one or the other. Um, and then obviously the other difference is the talents that are buffing them. Right, things that are buffing Mind Spike are just buffing Mind Spike, like Whispers of the Damned doesn't work with Mind Flay. Um, you know, I uh, think things like that. Where same thing with Mind Flay. There's Mind Flay Insanity here, which obviously just works with Mind Flay um, or Mental Decay. So I think, you know, th those are kind of the main problems, and I'm a little concerned with like it not being clear when to press one versus the other, just kind of make it kind of a sim thing. I don't want people to have to read my guide to like intuitively know how to play the spec. So hopefully we see some changes. Um, some things that they could consider, and again, I'm not like a, a game designer. This is just kind of like my anecdotal, like, hey, something in these realms could be could be interesting. They could have Mind Spike outright replace Mind Flay when talenting into it. Um, and doing so, um, any any things in here that are mind flay specific would have to be changed to also work with mind spike. Um, they could even do those one in, like independently of each other if they want. But I think the idea of mind spike overriding mind flay just instantly makes it clear, um, you know what that does. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it would help. Now, obviously, some of these like mental decay could work okay with mind spike, um, or. You know, Whispers of the Damned uh, would need to be changed a little bit. So there are some things in here that would require some iteration. Monomania would be the hardest one to make work with Mind Spike, which is why I think they should just delete it anyways. <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, uh, Mind Flay Insanity, I think, again, could work. Um, so there's just a bit of tweaking they'd have to do for the spells, but I think that's one option. Um, another thing that I'd like to see that, that might actually be better is put the baseline dot removal back into Mind Spike. So if you hard cast a Mind Spike, it still removes your dots. But in Dark Ascension, as part of the Dark Ascension cooldown, make it so Mind Spike no longer consumes dots. So if you pick the Dark Ascension cooldown, it's basically saying, hey, stop pressing Mind Flay now. You should be pressing Mind Spike inside of Dark Ascension. Um, and kind of giving you like a clear thing of like, you press Mind Spike when you get a Surge of Darkness proc to not consume your dots or inside of Dark Ascension, because that's what is actually getting buffed. I think that would make it much clearer, and also give Dark Ascension a bit more definition and identity in general. So, you know, I think, you know, some of these could work. Um, 
you could even combine parts of these ideas, but I think, you know, we just need to some, see some iteration on the mind spike and mind flay stuff in particular. So hopefully they work this out or, you know, uh, have time, but uh, that's, uh, that's mind spike and mind flay. Okay, state of shadow priest. What is left to be looked at and what still needs to be fixed? So um, I covered quite a lot in this post that we've already covered in other videos. So I'm gonna just kind of skip to the general feedback section of my long posts on the forums. Um, so obviously we're already much in mind spike. The next thing to cover is mind seer. So like I mentioned before, mind seer was updated to now consume insanity on the initial tick. I think in general, this feels weird because within a span of, of you know, the initial tick and the first tick, which is usually less than a second, you're consuming 50 insanity and full consuming an insanity bar is, is quite fast. Um, and I think that's actually removed some satisfying element of the spell. Um, and I, I'm not sure I'd like it, you know, obviously devouring plague is like press one global consume 50 insanity and they've kind of made mind seer feel similar in that way, but it's still a channeled spell. I just don't know if it feels fun. Like I, I don't think I, I like it. Um, this is also harder because mind seer is just doing such little crappy damage right now. It's really hard to like, uh, make it feel satisfying, I guess. So I'm really hoping we see some changes here. I'm not even sure if it makes sense to have um, an insanity spender that is a channeled spell. Like, I just don't know if that feels good. So I think that still needs some work. Um, I mean, the more and more I think about it, the more I'm unsure that I think I'd almost rather have Minds here back as an insanity, you know, filler in AoE and just give something else to consume insanity in AoE or maybe even make it Devouring Plague and have talents that make devouring plague spending and aoe make more sense versus single target um it could even be a choice node that's saying uh, like at the very top of your tree even that's saying like here's the devouring plague single target and if you want aoe pick this instead or maybe it's a cho like a node off of devouring plague that's saying some aoe component and making that devouring plague work in aoe bottom line not happy with mind seer and it makes the aoe rotation just feel incomplete so still needs some work i think um, I, I mentioned this already, but I'm not sure about the kind of bottom section with damnation, void torrent, malediction, like these kind of two sections, obviously void torrent is a very thematic spell for priests, damnation less so, um, not super attached to damnation. I could honestly see it removed. I know it is kind of unique and PVPers have used it a bit in the past. So maybe that's kind of what this is intended for, but off the bat, I don't see a whole lot of reasons to pick up these guys over here. Um, Obviously, it kind of depends on the build that you want to go. So if I reset this a little bit, um, let's see, do we have, oh yeah, we don't want Maddening Touch, we'll pick up this. And, you know, you can see, you already have quite a lot of points that you might want to spend. Uh, so, I don't know, like, maybe you pick up Void Torrent here, come down here, you get your Mind Devourer, you know, maybe you want to pick up Idol of Yogg Saron, and maybe this is kind of your build. I, I don't know. I, th I think it's just Void Torrent. It's just, it's not super exciting. Like, neither of these buttons are super exciting. So, to have them be in this bottom section of the tree and not really interacting with a whole lot of our kit, um, I don't know, kind of meh. And I think Damnation, especially, you know, the value proposition of this is basically you just get a free Devouring Plague every minute or 30 seconds. Uh, because in single target, which is kind of when this is useful, Maintaining Vampiric Touch and Shattered Pain is pretty easy. Um, obviously, there's some, you know, benefit here if you want, like, Snap Mastery benefit on something where you can say, hey, there's an ad that just spawned. I Damnation Mind Games it to blow it up. Um, so I think there are some small use cases for them here. It's just not the most exciting thing in the world. So I would like to see that kind of iterated on or changed. I'm not sure exactly what they could do, but just off-the-top feedback. Uh, we already mentioned the kind of awkwardness with like placement of unfurling darkness. I think the easiest way to fix that, draw a straight line right here. Boom, bing. I don't, and then, and then unfurling darkness somewhat becomes optional in that respect. Pick it up if you want it, but otherwise you can, you know, spend your points elsewhere. Um, also unfurling darkness, it was never the most exciting thing to me in the world. So they could also just remove it. Um, <laughs> I wasn't, I actually didn't mind it kind of being off in the middle of the right hand side of the tree because then I didn't have to pick it if I didn't want it. Uh, I think there are more exciting points, honestly. I, I think Damnation and Void Torrent are infinitely more exciting than Unfurling Darkness. Uh, you know, that that's just me. Okay, what else we got? So, uh, and th this is me kind of saying, you know, Void Bolt cooldown going down 
is is an improvement, but I still think Void Form and Dark Ascension are missing definition. They they're both kind of feel like incomplete cooldowns, uh, and they're kind of just gonna be pick the one that is mathed out to be better. And I don't think that's particularly fun. Okay, to finish off the video, what has not changed in this build? These are still kind of outstanding things, and especially the big ones that we still need to see fixed or changed. Uh, first of all, the idle spells. All of the idle spells still have problems. I made a video about this, you know, weeks ago in alpha. Um, the problems with them still stand. They have not changed them yet. Um, none of them are perfect. <laughs> they can all be improved, so hopefully we see that there. Not going to go over that in this video, but you can check out that video if you haven't already, if you're unclear on what I mean. Uh, I did mention this a little bit earlier, but Dark Void um, just doesn't feel like it makes sense right now. Um, you know, Dark Void being paired with Misery as like a choice node, I think in theory sounds okay, but the target caps are such a weird thing for both Dark Void and Shadow Crash that make the choices just kind of awkward and less clear. Um, I think, honestly, I would just prefer Dark Void go away and Shadow Crash get bumped up to seven or eight targets. Uh, that would be great. I uh, don't know if they'll do that, but I think, in general, Dark Void's you know, design goal is not clear to me. And then, I think there, there's still kind of a, and I did mention it before, the utility problems in our tree are still there. So, you know, you can get Silence or Dispersion without losing damage, but if you want both, you're immediately losing out on something. You know, maybe that's, uh, like, a, I don't know, you have to pick a point out here, right? Uh, that also means picking up Intangibility, Mental Fortitude, Psychic Horror, or Last Word is also at the cost of damage. Um, none of these options feel great. You know, anytime you're losing damage to pick up Utility, it's just kind of like, eh, you know, not the biggest fan. Obviously, they're not the craziest in the world to, to have or not, but, you know, losing out on that damage is still pretty feels bad. Um, I think... Uh, a way that they can fix this is to simply move a bit more things to the second or third se or portions of the tree um, or change it to where it's less optional. But yeah, we just have a lot of nodes, so I would love to see things kind of moved around a little bit so that it is easier to pick them up. You know, for example, if, you know, Coalescing Shadows was brought down, that means you could get two points without losing damage in that sense. Uh, but you would want to remove a node or two to compensate for that loss just kind of to make it feel better about picking them up. So hopefully we see some changes on that. Um, the other big thing, and again, I already kind of touched on this, is just AOE definition is feels lacking and unfinished. Um, especially when it comes from like a talent perspective, we have Shadow Flame Prism, which is a five target AOE from our funnel spells. We have Mindseer, which is an uncapped AOE spender, still kind of feels weird. Uh, we have Psychic Link and Pain of Death for more kind of funnel-y stuff. Um, and then you have Idol of Nazoth, Shadow Crash, Dark Void, Misery, and Maddening Touch, which is basically incentivizing you to spread your dots and, and to do that damage. Um, and then we kind of have Void Eruption for Burst. Uh, the problem from all of this is, like, we're missing Mass AoE, and we're missing Cohesion with all of these things. I don't think Psychic Link and Pain of Death are intended to be, like, Mythic Plusy talents. Um, you know, maybe Idol Nazoth gets fixed and makes sense for, and like that's our kind of Mythic Plus identity. Um, Shadow Flame Prism can't really be our Mythic Plus identity, or at least I don't feel like it should, considering it's a five target capped AoE cooldown. Um, it's really strange. It's really strange, especially given, um, and this is a huge thing that they, they did actually remove, unfortunately, we're still missing the second charge of Mind Blast. So right now on beta, when you log in and you're not inside of cool inside of Void Form, you only have one charge of Mind Blast, which just makes this feel even worse. Um, you know, it's 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 just not fun. They need to fix that as well. So hoping to see some better definition RA. We hoping to see that second charge of Mind Blast baseline and not just something we get inside of Void Form. Uh, so hopefully they can fix all of this stuff or at least have a chance to start iterating on it. Um, I was a little doom and gloom in the other video. This one I try to be a bit more positive. Um, I want to be clear. There is time to fix this. You know, we, we still have a couple months until Dragonflight will probably launch. I don't know the exact date, but I think we still have time to fix this. But that just means, you know, need to keep giving them feedback. We need to keep showing them that this stuff is important. A lot of you guys have already been posting on the forums, which is great. Um, so please, if you don't mind, you know, 
if you have your own thoughts, feel free to post those. If you agree with what I've said, it would help if you dropped, uh, signed in on the forums and, and did the heart on my posts. That would also be appreciated just to get up more visibility. Um, and hopefully we'll get some of these things looked at. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the patrons and the people that are in my YouTube members and everyone else that's supporting me, subbed on Twitch. I appreciate all the support. Or even if you're just watching the video all the way to this point, it's been a doozy. Uh, and I really appreciate it, guys. So thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.